Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Ala Nabiyyina Muhammad Wa Ala Alihi Wa Sahbihi Wa Sallam Amma Ba'd Ahabatifillah As we've heard the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam countless times Iftarakat al-Yahud Ala Itu Wa Sabi'in Firqa Wa Iftarakat al-Nasara Ala Ithnatayn Ithnatayn Wa Sabi'in Firqa Wa Sitaftariku Hadihi Umma Ala Thalatha Wa Sabi'in Firqa كلها في النار الواحدة كل من هي يا رسول الله قال من كان على مثل ما كان عليه وصحابي وكما قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said the Jews were breaking the seventy one sects the Christians in the seventy two sects my own in the seventy three sects all of them in the fire except one and they say يا رسول الله who are they and he said those who are upon what I am upon and what my companions are upon so the Prophet ﷺ made clear for us the Minhaj of Ahl Sunnah, the method, methodology of Ahl Sunnah, and the Madhab of Ahl Sunnah and the Aqidah of Ahl Sunnah. And that is an obligation for us to be ibta'id or ijtanibu min ahl bid'ah wal ahwa. It is an obligation upon us to be away from the people of bid'ah and the people of desires and the ways and paths and manahij of ahl bid'ah. And this is known to ahl sunnah. And applying those principles requires from us hikmah and fiqh. Some people will say that it's just simple, khalas. Anyone you think is a mubtadi'a, you run from. And the reality of the situation is that we have to look at every society and set of circumstances within their context. Some people will say this is mumaya, this is throwing away the principles. But this is not true, and I know some ulama, like Imam Muqbil, who was known for his harshness with Ahl Bid'ah, at the same time he made some fatawa allowing others to study out of necessity who had the knowledge, the prerequisite knowledge of the different groups of Ahl Bid'ah, he gave them fatawa so they, they could study so they could benefit while they were in Yemen because they were unable to go to the place uh, to demaj to study with the Shaykh for whatever barriers that they faced. So from this example and the countless others of Habit Tafilah, we know that we are in different situ situations, different societies. Some societies where there's a lot, where Ahl Sunnah is very strong, then you are in a better position to practice Hajjah and practice some of the other, you know, avoiding Ahl Bid'ah. But in some places where it's very mixed, and in fact Ahl Sunnah is very few in numbers, of course you're going to be forced to interact with your brothers and sisters of all various understandings of Islam. That doesn't mean you just mix and this one worships graves, so you're, pal you're drinking shy and you're just enjoying one another and this and that. No. But what it means is a habit of Allah is that you have to have fiqh and wisdom and how you practice those principles. And this is an, I've opened a huge bab which requires, as ulama have written volumes about this, this issues, but I just want us to have a very simplistic understanding to understand that it requires fit when speaking about Ahl Bidah and even interacting with Ahl Bidah. Perhaps you're on a job and you may have to, all the people around you are Muslim or most of them are Muslim, but some are Sufi, some are Jamaat Tabliq, some are this group, some are that group, Khwana Muslimin. In fact, I was in a situation just like that. Even my students. Many of them were Shia, and many of the people, or most of the people around me, you know, and they're non-Muslims and what have you. So you have to learn how to interact when you're in a situation like that with with people. At least have a a type of basic relationship related to issues of the dunya that you have to interact with the people. So you can't be just strictly take one position. It's always harsh. It's always not giving salams. No. There's fiqh when, when and how to apply those things. 
What is the level of bid'ah? What is the strength of Ahlul Sunnah? What is there's many details that ha, that fall into place. So I just hope that the youth that come after us will be blessed to go and study and gain more insight in how to practice these principles so we don't have this attacking of one another's honor between Ahlul Sunnah and that we don't have people who ruin the Dawah because they don't have fiqh and they don't have understanding and their knowledge is, is weak and they don't fit the, the hadith of the Prophet who said May bi khayran, whenever Allah wants good for a person gives them fiqh fi deen that they don't have this fiqh fi deen so then they yell out the window Ya Tabliki or this one curses uh, and speaks foul language about such and such group in the masjid or whatever the case may be. We have countless examples of people who don't have fiqh fi deen, don't have knowledge in the religion, speaking about these issues and trying to implement one aspect of some of these issues and falling into great error and causing more harm than good. So I ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses us to be a source of guidance and light and forgives us of our many shortcomings and sins and increases us with ilm علم النافية النافع ورزق طيب وعمل متقبلا and helps us to go forward based on kitab Allah wa sunnah of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the understanding of the salaf of this ummah and blesses us with ikhlas with thabat wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam